Now, earlier we asked you uh, who was using cloud, um, but do you know how it could help Welsh SMEs compete in the global marketplace? Uh, I'm delighted to welcome from uh, the Cloud Industry Forum, uh, Richard Sykes. A round of applause for Richard Sykes, please. Good evening. Can I be heard clearly at the back? Hopefully so. Because it's getting late, what I wanted to do was to just tell four stories of entrepreneurial companies to share the business models they're doing because they all work from the cloud. They aren't Welsh companies, but each of their models could be exploited in Wales very simply. So, first story takes me to Bangladesh, to the city of Dakar. And visiting an old, rundown, <coughs> dilapidated garment factory, on the fifth floor, you go in through a door and you suddenly find yourself somewhere that looks remarkably like the west coast of the States. And the time I last visited this company, which is called Brain Systems 23, they had 70 people there working over the internet, well-trained English-speaking IT professionals, working over the internet on platforms in North America to create specialist systems for clients in Singapore and Australia. Now, that is the nature of the world we're in with the cloud. You can operate in one place and you can operate worldwide. I'll probably get objections there that this really is about jobs disappearing abroad because obviously those IT professionals are a good deal less expensive in Bangladesh. And there's an element of truth of that, but let me just test your understanding of these things. This country does a lot of offshoring. And if you offshore, it comes back, you, come, you appear in the balance of trade as services being imported. So computer services, software services, related services, technology services, we imported, we import at the rate of about $5.5 billion worth a year. Where do you think our balance of trade is in that area? Hands up who reckons we're probably in deficit in that trade. Who reckons we're about in balance? Who reckons we're in significant surplus? Well, those are correct. Our exports run at about $12 billion a year. We are one of the world's most competitive offshoring locations there is. Please remember that when people talk about India being competitive. The UK is amongst the world's most competitive offshoring locations because it is not only cost, it's the extra value add you add from IP experience, intelligence and things like that. And therefore the real story from the Dakar story is you can operate globally now and put your full strength behind. You can leverage those kind of resources. AOL in North America encourages each of its software developers to use a trade mart called Odesk, where you can put work out for tender and you get access to the independent um, software developers of the world to do work for you. And each AOL developer in North America, which is quite expensive country, is able to have up to three collaborators around the world that they're responsible for through the ODES capacity. They call it brain extension. It allows them to be more competitive. Uh, ODES has three and a half thousand players earning their living out of Bangladesh for a start. Um, so the picture that I paint there is a business model that says you can operate globally right from the start. You can sit in an office here and do work right across the world if you're offering something that's special that people are willing to pay for. Now clearly the key things there are the platforms that are available, Amazon Cloud, uh, Apple's platform for apps, um, good telecommunications, we've heard a lot of that today about getting that into the areas of Wales. So let me then go to the second story which shows the power of a really effective platform to liberate, which is the platform provided by a company called SCC in Birmingham, big privately owned company that has built a strong data center capacity there, aimed at the public sector, 
So it provides all the basic platform for secure in terms of security, regulatory compliance, and such like. And a company that I came across working on STC's platform about a year ago called Patchwork. Patchwork is the creation of a couple of social workers, not IT geeks, but social workers who were finding it very difficult in the London borough of Barnet to get the proper communication together of the police and the social workers and the housing people and the local schools when they had a whole flow of new issues and families coming at them. And one way they could have done it was to turn to the big IT industry, data analysts, planners, to create a great big system. What they did was to sit on the SCC platform and use very standard tools, emailing, SCC, um, uh, messaging systems, things like that, to create their own capacity, which is patchwork. Sufficiently effective that it is now being exported to Australia. Small company, but the key message there is that the platforms are there that if you have the deep intimacy and the experience of your business and the way you work, and you can create services around that experience and intimacy, now is the time to go at it. A bigger example of that importance of intimacy and really understanding is a company called Oriac. Oriac, British company, a group of players who really understand the insurance industry well. They took a software package out of Scandinavia that had been there for many years and was well designed for handling document management in the insurance industry. They reworked the software to make it cloud native, I, to work really in the cloud on the Amazon platform. But they took great care to put in the place the APIs, the technological standards that would then allow them to integrate it, service integrate it, with Salesforce's CRM. So suddenly, they were in the position to create a whole lot of customer-oriented services, at the heart of which was the documentation management. So you could, for their clients, go into a car showroom. As you're buying a car, your insurance options are presented to you on your PDA. As you complete the purchase of the car, you complete the insurance arrangements. Six, six months down the track, you have a burglary or a prang, and on your PDA instantly comes at you all the services you need. They tell the story that when they go into their new customers and ask their customers what kind of service melange they need, the local IT folks say, we, we're working on that, and we reckon it'll take us another three or four months. And Oriac says, we can do it within 24 hours very fast, very responsive, based on the ability to service integrate, based on the ability of a real understanding of how their market works. And I think you'll see there's a, a theme that I'm putting in there, which is the importance not only of deep skills in software and how you create services using software, but very deep intimacy in the end market that you're working within. And that is really a very key message I want to carry across today is that the capability now for a young small company that knows an area very well to create new services, new capabilities based on that deep intimacy is very strong. Final story is a company of a company called Fastfill. Slightly different because in this area what we're talking about here is the ability to combine really deep understanding of the underlying technology for your service and the service itself. Fastfill is building a very fast business in derivatives trading. Very complicated area of derivatives trading, but it has developed a very strong reputation because it has a whole core of people who are very deeply knowledgeable on derivatives trading, but also in the underlying technology for delivering it. And what their customers love about Fastfill is that they, these people sit close to the derivatives trading floors. A trader begins developing a new play. Fastfill can recreate the services that that trader needs very fast. In the old days, again, local IT department would have sucked their thumbs and said, give us six months, Gov, and we'll put that together for you. Fastfill has the detailed expertise and knowledge how to merge and develop services to allow very fast responsiveness. So, 
The reason for telling these four stories is to show that these kind of models now, that are based on the ability to take the underlying platforms that allow you to get all your computing power, your network power, your storage power, available at your fingertips and allow you to focus on your markets, to allow you to develop new business models and new businesses very fast based on your real deep intimacy with those markets and those cu uh, customers, this is now the time. Just to finish briefly for the Cloud Industry Forum, uh, whose chairman I'm very proud to be, take a look at our website, but we have one particular capability we offer, and our whole purpose in life is to help develop a very effective and rapid growth in the use of the cloud where it helps business. But one of the things we recognized was that a lot of these younger companies we're talking about have at the beginnings of a problem because of concerns about security and things like that, of developing a reputation from an early stage. So we've developed a code of practice. It's a self-certified code of practice and it allows you to establish that you are doing all the right things to be secure, to be effective, to be regulatory compliant, things like that. There's a degree of independence assurance in that certification. It allows you, as a young company, to become uh, CIF certified. And I'm glad to say that at least one company outside Certus is close to the process of completing that certification as a Welsh company that will be CIF certified as a young uh, company of great promise in the cloud. So my conclusion from these four stories is to say now is the time for entrepreneurs to be able to work. Very exciting new opportunities to use all sorts of new innovative business models around the services operating off these technology platforms that are made available. Now is the time to really innovate. The core of that innovation increasingly is having some area of the market where you are really very intimate with the customer, the market, what the requirements are so you can create new business models, new services around meeting those requirements very effectively and competitively. And you can do it very rapidly globally from an early stage. Remember the story of the 70 people in the Dakar Center, global. Thank you very much.